you for being here, Jane, and some of the foundation's past presidents. We thank you um, for your leadership, your service, and the support of the foundation. And I ask that they stand so we can recognize them, past presidents. A number of the Foundation's Legacy for Justice members are with us this morning. These generous donors have either included the Foundation in their estate planning, made a gift or pledge of more than $10,000, or directed a significant Cypre award to the Foundation. All members' names are on the pages 16 and 17 of your program. If you are a Legacy for Justice member, kindly stand so that we can thank you for your contribution. We also thank the many Florida Bar Foundation fellows joining us. They belong uh, to our Lifetimes uh, Giving Society and also uh, listed in our program on page 18, so thank you. We cannot thank our donors and sponsors enough. Thank you for being here to celebrate with us the good work being done to increase access to civil legal aid. Several directors and staff members from legal aid organizations that receive foundation grants are here today. Our grantees who are listed on page 34 of your program are tireless in their endeavors to represent vulnerable and low-income Floridians in a wide variety of legal areas daily. We appreciate their extraordinary efforts and we thank you for the good work that you're doing. We're so grateful for you. The Foundation's Board of Directors play a critical role and their hard work, insight, and service is very valued. The Foundation applauds their efforts and there are five board members whose names are now and uh, terms are now ending, including immediate past president Steve Sen. And I think I'm in denial. I don't want them to leave. <laughs> Steve has been a member of the Foundation's board for the past 10 years. He's been a steadfast, caring friend and resourceful leader, and he will be missed. He will continue supporting us as an endowment trustee. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Greg Coleman, Dory Foster Morales, Laura Tibbles, and Samantha Vastiana are also at the end of their term on our board. Judge Emerson Thompson is also terming off as our uh, endowment trust. And we're grateful for all that they have given to the foundation. Thanks to each of you for your service. I'd like to take a quick moment to introduce you to the foundation's president-elect, Judge Suzanne Van Wyck. Judge Van Wyck was not able to join us today, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about her. She's an administrative law judge with the Florida Department of Administrative Hearings in Tallahassee, and she has served on our board since 2014, most recently as the Grants Committee Chair. The foundation is very excited to have Judge Van Wyck on as the president, incoming president. So can't wait for you all to meet her if you haven't already. We're incredibly grateful for our generous sponsors who have made this event possible today. They'll be recognized on the screen, in your program, and on the event signage. And you'll meet some of the representatives on the stage as well. I now invite the beautiful Tara Price of Schutz and Bowen. Uh, Schutz and Bowen is our sponsor of the Goldstein Van Nortwick Award, and Tara is a partner in the Tallahassee office of Schutz and Bowen, where she's a member of the appellate practice group. Thank you, Connie, and thank you for allowing us to join you this morning and in your meaningful work. I'd also like to ask all of this year's recipients to come to the front of the room and stand just off stage so that I can call you up one group at a time, please. 
The Goldstein Van Nortwick Award for Excellence is a competitive award that recognizes significant impact work undertaken by a foundation grantee. This award is named after Stephen Goldstein, a former legal services attorney and law professor who was a tireless advocate of the legal rights of the poor and disadvantaged, and his good friend, Judge Bill Van Nortwick, a foundation president who devoted decades of leadership promoting pro bono and legal aid service. The award committee included Brian Curie, Sarita Courtney Bagori, Maria Gonzalez, and Steve Sen. The committee was chaired by Maria Henderson, former foundation president and wife of Bill Van Norwick. Thank you all for your service. This year's winning project was a combined effort of community law program and Bay Area legal services to expand access to free legal services for tenants impacted by COVID-19 who were at risk of eviction and homelessness. The Pinellas Eviction Diversion Program was designed to provide holistic services to tenants in Pinellas County, including free legal assistance, opportunities to mediate with landlords in a virtual setting using Zoom, and expedited access to rental assistance and housing navigation, all within one location. The project engaged in an aggressive and targeted outreach campaign, both on the ground and via social media. It also engaged in policy advocacy with Pinellas County to increase the efficiency of its emergency rental assistance program. By the end of 2021, the project had served more than 1,000 tenant households, 72% received extended services, resulting in getting their past rent paid or remaining stably housed or gaining additional time to find alternate housing. Through formal mediation and informal negotiations, the project helped tenants access more than $3 million in rental assistance. 56% of those helped were persons of color. In addition to these outcomes for individual clients, Community Legal Program and Bay Area Legal Services collaborated with the Homeless Leadership Alliance, helping 84 tenant households find new housing without experiencing homelessness. Of this number to date, 81 of the households remain stably housed. The project's advocacy efforts led to a number of changes, including the county fast-tracking tenant applications that were in active eviction status, the removal of birth certificate documentation for minors in the household, and allowing for utility payments to be made at the point of a tenant being 30 days past due as opposed to waiting until a shutoff notice has been issued. As a result, the Pinellas Emergency Rental Assistance Program's processing time has been cut from an average of 60 to 20 days. I'd now like to ask Kimberly Rogers of Community Law Program and Lisa Brody of Bay Area Legal Services to join me on stage to accept this award. First runner-up for the 2022 Goldstein Van Nortwick Award is Florida Health Justice Project. Their goal was to ensure that former foster care youth do not lose Medicaid coverage when they age out of the dependency system. To accomplish that, the Florida Health Justice Project worked to reform the Department of Children and Families eligibility determination process, which terminated beneficiaries' eligibility without review and required them to file new applications. The process had left vulnerable youth unable to access medical coverage that they are entitled to until age 26. As a result of this work, however, DCF began to automatically extend Medicaid coverage for former foster youth who age out of licensed care without requiring a new application. 1,730 former foster children were re-enrolled. I'd like to invite to the stage Melissa Lipnick from Florida Health Justice Project to accept their award. Okay. 
Our second runner-up is Americans for Immigrant Justice. In April 2020, Americans for Immigrant Justice litigation staff joined the legal team in a class action filed in the Southern District of Florida Federal Court. The goal of the lawsuit was to ensure that Immigration and Customs Enforcement complied with the CDC's guidelines and its own detention standards to provide safe living conditions during the pandemic to all of the South Florida's detained immigrants. As a result of the Americans for Immigrant Justice's work was a settlement that required detention facilities to comply with ICE, pandemic, and CDC guidelines. A set of COVID-19 vaccination guidelines and protocol were also fully implemented at the detention facilities. Jennifer Coberly, please come to the stage to accept your award. So special. 